As Obi-Wan stands before the council, curious about why he was summoned, all of his questions are answered. Yoda announces to Kenobi that the Jedi Council has appointed him as a Jedi Knight. Obi-Wan is ecstatic, beaming from ear to ear. What an accomplishment this was. However, his excitement is short-lived as he then breaks the news to Kenobi that he will not be allowed to train Anakin Skywalker. Grave danger, I fear, from that boy, Yoda says. Qui-Gon believed in him, Kenobi counters. Trained, the boy will be, Yoda responds. Obi-Wan inquires, confused. Then, who's training him? Qui-Gon's last wishes were for me to train him. Obi-Wan smiles. Mm, too young, you are. Inexperienced, you will be. Training him, Master Fisto will be. Have you ever wondered what would have happened if Kid Fisto had trained Anakin Skywalker? Well, if so, then today you are in for an absolute treat because that's the topic that we'll be exploring in today's video. So grab your warm bowl of Bantha stew, a cold glass of Bantha brew, and cuddle up with your pet Tauntaun as we dive right into what if Kit Fisto trained Anakin Skywalker. If you like what you see, please like and subscribe as it shows a lot of support for the channel. Now, without further ado, let's hop right into today's video. If he is the chosen one as we believe he is. Then who will train him? inquires Kenobi. Yoda answers, In need of a more passive approach, he is. In that moment, a pair of boots plod into the room. The figure of Kit Fisto towers over the other two, his tendrils cascading down his back. Train the boy. Master Fisto will, announces Yoda. Kenobi nods, seemingly dejected that he would not have the chance to train the Chosen One as Qui-Gon instructed, but he trusts Master Yoda's judgment and that he made the right decision. Believe he will channel the emotion within the boy and properly teach him to understand it. We do, Yoda continues. Kenobi, although a little bit sad, respects Kit Fisto and is glad that Anakin will have himself a good mentor. I wish you the best, Master Fisto, Obi-Wan says, nodding his head to the old master. Fisto smiles. Oh, indeed, Master Kenobi. I look forward to training this boy and I will do my best to ensure that Qui-Gon's final wishes are preserved. Yoda looks at the two of them. Mm, believe in you both. I do, he says. Kenobi approaches the boy after this meeting with the council. Hello, Anakin, he smiles. I have somebody that I'd like you to meet. Fisto then walks through the door to the room where Anakin is staying. This is Kit Fisto, he announces. He will be your master in the Jedi Order. Fisto extends his hand to greet the boy. I've heard a lot about you, he comments with a toothy smile. Why not you, Obi-Wan, says Anakin. He lies, not wanting Anakin to find out what Yoda believes about his temperament. Yoda and I have deemed that Kit Fisto is the best master for you, and the best master to help you channel your energy in the Force. He takes a knee down to Anakin's level. It's for the best, Anakin. Trust me. The boy nods before greeting Fisto with a forced grin. Over the following few years, Anakin swiftly overcomes his bitterness and learns to admire his master. Kit Fisto humors his apprentice, treating him with respect and challenging to curb his emotions rather than suppress them. His easygoing nature is the perfect fit for Anakin, who thrives under the watchful eye of his mentor, quickly becoming a competent force user and extremely proficient with a lightsaber. His charisma and attunement to emotions due to his Nautilin physiology allow for the apprentice and the master duo to have an extreme benefit and train together well. Anakin is able to confide in his master during his times of needs and doesn't feel like he has to hold it all inside. Though not a father figure in Anakin's eyes, he develops a close bond with Fisto, one comparable to a brotherhood of sorts. Fisto helps reinforce Anakin's trust in the Jedi and steer him away from bad actors who attempt to take advantage of the Chosen One. Years later, Anakin tosses and turns in his sleep. Visions of his mother flash through his mind once again, and visions of her in danger. No, no, he mumbles in his sleep. Anakin wakes in a cold sweat, sitting upright. He breathes in fast and short. He swings his legs out of bed, regulating his breathing and rubbing his face to further wake himself. Anakin seeks out his master in that moment. He needs to tell Fisto of these visions. He'll know what to do. 
He finds Kid Fisto meditating in the Jedi Temple. Master Fisto, announces Anakin, surprising his master. There's something I need to talk to you about. Of course, my Padawan, he replies. What seems to be troubling you? Anakin walks further into the room, sitting next to his master. It's my mother, he says. I've been having nightmares. What sort of nightmares, Anakin? Fisto inquires. She's in danger, Anakin responds. Fisto pauses for a moment, stroking his chin. Mmm, and if these nightmares were real, what would you want to do about them? Well, I'd save her, of course, Anakin scoffs. Without saying a word, Fisto stands up and starts to walk from the room. Master Fisto, where are you going? Anakin asks. To Tatooine, of course. Are you coming with me? He responds, smiling. The two fly through space at mind-bending speeds on a course to Tatooine in order to ensure Shmi's safety. Anakin fidgets, staring into the distance. Fisto places a hand on his shoulder. We're nearly there, Anakin. Don't fret. The two arrive on Tatooine and exit their spacecraft. The blazing heat of the planet beats down on them as they tread through the coarse sand. Anakin remembers why he doesn't like sand. It's rough, coarse, irritating, and it gets everywhere. But he doesn't tell Master Fisto. He keeps his thoughts inside. The two arrive at Mos Espa, but they can't seem to find Shmi. Instead, the two only find Watto. Ah, oh, Annie, it's been a while, he says excitedly. Indeed it has. I never thought I'd be so happy to see your ugly face, Anakin jokes. Watto grimaces at the insult, but pushes aside as he begins inquiring further. So, what brings you to Tatooine, Skywalker? I'm looking for my mother. Do you have any information as to her whereabouts? Anakin replies, sternly. Oh, Shmi, Watto inquires. Your mother's been gone for years, boy, he laughs. A pit forms in Anakin's stomach as he continues to inquire further. She's... Gone? He asks. Yeah, she's gone. She, uh, got married or something. Gone up with that Lars fellow out on some homestead, I heard. She's there doing something, he says, gesturing to him. Anakin relaxes his shoulders and lets out a breath that he didn't know he'd been holding in. He's excited to hear that she's still alive and well. Thanks, Watto, Anakin responds, before turning his back and departing for the homestead. Watto calls after him asking, So, do you have a lightsaber now? Anakin whirls around, and he smiles, showing Watto the lightsaber. Well, of course, he says, igniting it, seeing the blue blade illuminate the sky around him. So, uh, how much would you take for that? Anakin shakes his head, smiling. Oh, this thing, it's not for sale, Anakin says. I know how to use it, too, so don't try any funny business he says. Watto lets out a dejected grunt before heading back inside his shop, waving at Anakin one last time. Visto and Anakin trek through the desert towards the Lars homestead. I take it you know him, questions Visto. I suppose you could say that, Anakin answers. Visto chuckles as the sun begins to set and the horizon turns an orange red. The two arrive at the homestead and approach a villager. Hey, I'm looking for Shmi Skywalker, Anakin asks. Is she around? He's met with the face of a young man alongside a young woman, who are standing hand in hand, looking out onto the sunset. Whoa, wait, 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 wait. You're, you're Anakin Skywalker, the man says. Anakin looks at him, a little bit puzzled. Uh, yes, that's me, he says. Am I famous around here? He asks with a chuckle. Anakin, there's no time for introductions right now, but... I know where your mother is. She was just taken in an attack from the Tuscans, and I think that they're going to do something to her. The color drains from Anakin's face, and he's plastered with a look of horror. Fisto steps in in this moment. Where was this attack? They gesture in a direction as they cover their mouth in tears streak down their face. Anakin bolts off, determined not to let his mother die at the hands of the Tuscan raiders. Fisto follows behind, catching up to Anakin as they approach the Tuscan camp. Fisto leads Anakin behind the hut and briefs him on the operation. We're here to save Shmi, Anakin, and we'll be in and out without any conflict. Only draw your saber if the Tuscans pose an immediate threat to you, I, or your mother. Anyone else caught in the attack for that matter as well. Is that clear? 
Fisto says sternly. Anakin nods and gulps as the two make their way around the hut. Anakin and Fisto split up in search of Shmi. Anakin nears a Tusken, entering a house, and finds the mangled corpse of one of the Tusken Raiders' victims. A pit forms in his stomach as he prays that his mother hadn't met the same fate. In that moment, he hears a cry. Anakin! It's Fisto. I found her, he says. Anakin rushes out to find Kit and Shmi running from the Tuscans. Bolts are being fired at them and deflected by his master. Anakin rushes over to assist in deflecting even more blaster bolts. On my count, we run, Fisto says, looking at Anakin and Shmi, both of them nodding, understanding the mission. Three, two, one. Fisto and Anakin repel the raiders before running away with Shmi. The three bolt across the desert as fast as Shmi can go, their hearts pounding as they tread through the scorching sand. But this plan doesn't work for long, as one of the bolts hits Shmi's leg. She falls into the sand, letting out a pained gasp. Anakin hurriedly picks her up, carrying his mother through the desert towards the speeders they had taken there, now unable to defend himself. What do we do? He asks Fisto, panicked. 20 more meters until the speeders, Fisto responds. Anakin lets out an exasperated grunt as he continues to carry his mother on his back, holding her tightly, trusting the force and his master that they would help him. They were almost there, almost at the speeders, and finally they were able to hop on and speed away into the desert, away from the howls of the Tuscans. The three of them pant as they continue away on the speeders, Shmi holding tight to Anakin. How did you find me? Shmi asks gently. Oh, you're going to call me crazy, Mom, but I had a vision, he says. Are you okay? He continues. Visto answers for her. She will be, but she's been hit pretty badly. We need to get her back to the homestead. Now. Let's be quiet. It's going to be okay. Later that day, the three arrive at Lars's homestead, and Shmi is treated for her injuries. Anakin sits with his mother for a while, catching up on the past few years since he went off to become a Jedi. Shmi is amazed at her son's stories and beyond proud of how far he's come, even though she knew that he was going to do incredible things for the galaxy when he left. The moment can't last for long, though, as Fisto receives an unexpected call from Coruscant, informing him of the attempted assassination of Senator Amidala. Their presence is requested by the Chancellor. Goodbyes are said as the two Jedi head back to Coruscant to protect the Senator. Upon their arrival on Coruscant, the two, along with a strange face that Anakin hadn't really interacted with a whole lot, end up meeting. Oh, hello. Who are you? Anakin asks. My name is Ahsoka Tano, she says. It's a pleasure to meet you. I've heard a lot about your exploits with Master Fisto, and I'm looking forward to working with you guys on this, Ahsoka says, beaming. Well, how did you get assigned to this case? Anakin asks. Well, I'm a youngling, but, you know, I'm a little bit ahead of the curve. I think that Master Yoda wanted me to work with some people who know what they're doing and who actually have experience in the field. So, because this is a relatively simple mission, I'm going to be helping you guys along. Anakin kind of squints at her a little bit, surprised by Master Yoda's decision in this matter, but he goes along with it. Well, it's a pleasure to meet you, Ahsoka. He says, Ah, oh, pleasure indeed, Kit Fisto says, patting her on the back. We're looking forward to working with you. I was informed by Master Yoda recently that you would be coming with us, and I am excited for one to have another Padawan in the mix. They then head to Senator Amidala's penthouse. Jar Jar Binks excitedly runs up to greet Anakin at the door. Misa so smiling to see you, sa! Jar Jar exclaims. Anakin laughs and introduces Kid Fisto and Ahsoka Tano to the Gungan. They exchange pleasantries before entering further into the apartment. Jar Jar calls over Padme to meet the Jedi. It's an honor to meet you, Fisto greets the senator. She replies, The pleasure is all mine, Master Fisto. She spots Anakin behind him and exclaims, Annie? My goodness, you've grown! Anakin responds, entranced. So have you grown more beautiful. I mean, Padme smiles awkwardly before leading the Jedi to the matter at hand. I appreciate your presence here, Fisto, Anakin, and Ahsoka, but I don't need more security. I need answers. I need to know who's trying to kill me, she exclaims. Fisto swiftly responds, Senator Amidala, our job here is to ensure your safety, and I refuse to exceed my mandate, he smiles. Master Yoda would rip me a new one again. Padme looks to Anakin, hoping that he'll support him. 
but he bites his tongue and gives Padme a reassuring look. After an awkward silence, looking at Fisto, the senator comments, Perhaps merely your presence. The mystery surrounding this threat will be revealed. With a smile, she continues, Now, if you'll excuse me, I must retire. Padme exits the room, leaving the Jedi with Jar Jar and Typho, who comments, I know I'll feel better for having you here. I'll have an officer stationed on each floor, and I'll be in the control center downstairs. Miss Abustin with happiness to see you, Saiken Annie, Jar Jar comments. <laughs> Anakin smiles. It's good to see you too, Jar Jar. Later that night, Anakin, Fisto, and Ahsoka are guarding the senator. Midway through their conversation, the three all sense a disturbance in the force. The Jedi sprint to the sleeping senator to save her from the impending harm. Anakin leaps onto the bed, slicing the Kuhans on top of Padme. Fisto then spots a courier droid immediately outside the window and leaps to catch it. Meanwhile, Anakin and Ahsoka rush to get themselves a speeder and follow Fisto. The challenging bounty hunter, Zam Whistle, lays her sights on Fisto, preparing for the kill. She shoots and hits the courier droid, sending Fisto plummeting to the vast rows of Coruscant apartments. Just in the nick of time, though, Anakin swoops in with his speeder, catching Fisto. Very good, my Padawan, Fisto announces with their approval. There he is, he comments, pointing and Anakin changes course for the bounty hunter. The three speed through the metropolis of Coruscant in pursuit of the fugitive. As they wind through the city streets, they find themselves atop the bounty hunter. Anakin leaps in pursuit, stabbing his lightsaber directly through the center console, sending the ship plummeting to the ground quickly. He jumps just before they make impact, cushioning his fall. Fisto and Ahsoka quickly catch him, and the two pull the bounty hunter aside for questioning. Fisto inquires calmly, do you know exactly who you were trying to kill? She responds, It was a senator from the bow. And who hired you? Fisto continues. It was a job, Wessel replies vaguely. Anakin chimes in. Look, we're not going to hurt you. Just tell us who hired you. Zan begins to announce the name of the bounty hunter who paid her, but before she can utter the name, she's hit in the throat by a toxic dark. The trio look up to see a Mandalorian bounty hunter fleeing the scene. Immediately, they return to their post, dejected by the lack of intel gathered. In the morning, the Jedi are separated and assigned to different posts. Anakin and Ahsoka accompany Padme Amidala to Naboo in a bid to ensure her safety. Fisto, on the other hand, is sent with Obi-Wan Kenobi on a mission to Kamino. As Yoda senses there's something afoot there that had been scrubbed from the Jedi archives, especially after Obi-Wan goes to his old friend... Dexter Jetster, and finds out the truth about the dart. The three go their separate paths, with Anakin and Padme's bond deepening during the trip. There's clearly chemistry between the two, but Ahsoka's presence prevents their romance from progressing any further. Not long through the visit, Fisto informs Anakin that Jango Fett is the bounty hunter that had been spotted earlier, and that he had been arrested. To Anakin's joy, though, he's instructed to wait with Padme on Naboo until he received further instructions. With Jango Fett in custody, the Jedi Council begins to interrogate him for answers. He is initially hesitant to divulge information, but eventually agrees on the condition that the Jedi release him if he provides them with the information that they require. The Jedi reluctantly accept this deal, deeming the sacrifice necessary to obtain the information from Fett. He repeats what he knows about the buyer, some guy named Tyrannus, who was apparently a former Jedi from Sereno. After some thought, the council concludes that Tyrannus and Dooku are one in the same and questions where the Count is located. Hesitantly, Fett reveals that Dooku is on Geonosis preparing a droid army to attack the Republic. The Jedi Council then goes to the Senate and provides them with this information. Many of the Senators are shocked and fearful of this revelation. With Padme being absent on Coruscant, Representative Jar Jar Binks motioned to give Palpatine emergency powers required to begin the war and commission this army for the Republic. The vote passes and the clone army is accepted as the Republic's military force. During this time, the Jedi are instituted as generals and commanders for the Grand Army of the Republic. The Jedi begin to plan an attack on Geonosis, eager to put a stop to Dooku's droid army before they become too powerful. Yoda and Windu lead the Jedi in an assault against the Separatists on Geonosis, a massive force of 2 
800 Jedi aid in the attack, including Anakin and Ahsoka, who have escorted Padme back to Coruscant after hearing the Senate's decision, deeming her to be now under the protection of the Grand Army of the Republic. Fisto, Kenobi, Anakin, and Ahsoka locate Dooku and chase him down to his citadel, where his ship waits. The four corner Dooku in the citadel before he can escape. They use their respective fighting forms to overwhelm Dooku and overpower him in that moment, even though he is a talented duelist himself. Even with the less experienced Anakin and Ahsoka hopping into the fight, Dooku cannot defeat four Jedi at once and is worn down before Yoda's arrival, which results in his arrest. Yoda and the remaining Jedi transport Dooku back to the Jedi Temple to interrogate him. He's alive and well, and now they could get the information from him about what was truly going on with the Separatists. With Fett's confession, the Jedi believe that Dooku ordered the clone army. They ask him why he would do this. But in that moment, Dooku simply smiles, refusing to confess to anything. Irritated, the Jedi ask Fett to confirm if this is the same Tyrannus that he spoke with, to which Jango confirms. The Council presents Fett's confession and all other findings that they have to the Senate, which causes even greater confusion, especially after the Jedi participated in Battle Geonosis. A formal investigation is placed into the cloning facility on Kamino, as Padme is curious about what is going on, and she is not incredibly fond of all of this stuff that is going on with the military. I believe that action is required now, she says, to get to the bottom of this mess. In this moment, the inhibitor chips are eventually discovered, unearthed by this inquiry into what was going on on Camino. Along with these, the contingency plans are also unearthed. The Senate swiftly moves to have the inhibitor chips removed, as per the Jedi's recommendation. They trust the Jedi far more than they trust the office of the Chancellor, and they also know that the Jedi would never turn on the democratically elected state of the Republic. With Dooku in custody, the CIS leaders are eventually hunted down and arrested if they escaped Geonosis. The droid factories on Geonosis are destroyed after the battle, and the Separatist movement comes to a swift end. Palpatine is ousted from the office after his emergency powers are revoked by the Senate, and in that moment he retires from politics altogether. With the Sith grand plan in shambles, Sidious is forced into hiding, contemplating and rethinking his strategy. He would try to keep an Anakin's contact to turn him to the dark side, but with his promotion to knighthood after helping defeat Dooku and the naming of Ahsoka as his apprentice, Anakin is not persuaded by Palpatine, especially with Kit Fisto in his corner cheering him on. He cuts ties with the washed up politician who returns to Naboo, and now Palpatine would have to search for a new apprentice. The Sith are not dead, but their plan has been foiled, and it will take many years before they can make that kind of progress again. Anakin and Padme's relationship continues to blossom for the next few years, with Anakin being mature, but not refusing to embrace his more positive emotions thanks to Fisto's teaching and encouragement. He eventually marries Padme and starts a family of his own. Kit Fisto is proud of him, especially knowing his own dealings with Ayla Secura. When the Jedi Council learns of this marriage, they actually see how Anakin has maintained and controlled his emotions, allowing for Padme to be a motivator to him in his training and dedication to the light side. Fisto makes a bold proclamation to the Jedi Council, saying that he believes Anakin should continue to serve in the Order. In this moment, they actually agree with him. The Jedi do not expel Anakin. Instead, Anakin and Padme have their children trained as Jedi from birth, but with Anakin and Kit Fisto being their teachers, along with Ahsoka Tano and Obi-Wan occasionally chipping in every once in a while too. Anakin eventually is promoted to Master and joins the Council. He moves the Council to reach out to the wider galaxy, especially because he wants to see them impact the Outer Rim and truly do what is right for the people suffering. He goes back to Tatooine and attempts to start taking on the Hot Clans alongside this remaining clone force that had joined to become a security patrol for him. 
It takes centuries to undo the corruption within the Republic and within the Outer Rim, but Anakin starts the movement. The Jedi would be on the watch for Sith Lords, especially because they knew about Tyrannus, and they had to know that there was a master out there somewhere as well, lurking in the shadows. Peace remains in the galaxy, but there is always the opportunity that the Sith could take to reveal themselves to the galaxy once more.